Okay, so we're back at it. Now we're at about nil. So here, what is going on is um, they say um, we set a class called about nil. I've ran rake over here, and you can see that that causes us to say that we have an error on line five. So we're going to go here, line five. Test that nil is an object. So assert equal nil is a object. That's kind of cool the way Ruby does that, right? Um, I'm going to open up a new tab here, command T, and then I'm going to go IRB. So this is called um, the Ruby uh, REPL environment. So reply, evaluate, print loop. And so now we can play with this. So we could say um, nil, and you'll see that it prints back nil. So nil is a object, and then OBJ ACT. That's true. So we can see that nil is an object. So object is actually a class as well in Ruby. So you can... Um, you can print that out. So nil is an object, true. Cool, and so if we save that, and then we come back over here and run rake again, we're gonna see that we're now on um, line, uh, we need to fill me in on line 16, so about nil is here. And so now I'm just gonna, instead of doing it each time, I'm just gonna do all of these now. So um, test don't get null pointer errors when calling methods on nil. Test you don't get null pointer errors when calling methods on nil. Okay, what happens when you call a method that doesn't exist? The following begin rescue end code block captures the exception and makes some assertions about it. So it says begin nil some object nil doesn't know about. So what does this mean? It's just saying that nil doesn't have this method. So if you go nil dot some object, you're going to get what's called a um, uh, undefined method, a no method error here. So because this is going to give us an error, they've created a rescue here. And the exception, we set the exception equal to uh, ex, a variable called ex. And then we assert equal that ex.class. So what's that? Exception. Well, if we go exception.class, we're going to see that the exception is a class. So what exception has been caught? Hmm. Okay, so the exception must record the error. So I think that it's going to be no method error. It's going to take no method error. And so no method error .class is equal to a class as well. So uh, what message was attached to the exception with part of the error message? Replace the underscore with part of the error message. So I think, okay, so assert match, this is going to give us a regular expression. And so within there, um, we've got our um, exception dot uh, message. If we did that with there, okay, it doesn't happen. So what I'm thinking is it's just going to be no method error. So if we go uh, no method error. And so this is just going to be a regular expression that uh, tests to see if it matches with, if there is a match of, the, of this regular expression in here. Test nil has a few methods defined on it. So there's, here's some interesting ones. So assert equal nil. Um, so if we take it to the, uh, uh, the REPL, we can go nil like that. And then it says true. So nil is an object and it does have methods that you can call on it. Can you go nil dot to string? It gives you an empty string, which is pretty cool. And so nil dot inspect, that actually prints out nil as a string. So now we can fill these in now that we know the answers. So it's going to be true. Nil to string is going to be an empty string. And nil dot inspect is going to be uh, nil. Cool. And so, um, let's see. Okay, we'll come back over here and we're gonna run rake again. And it looks like expected undefined method, some method nil for nil to match no method error. Undefined method, expected undefined method, some nil for nil class to match no method error. And that was on line 20, so here, no method error. Expected undefined method. Maybe undefined method needs to go here. So let's save this and then run rake. And now it looks like we're on to about objects. So I'm gonna keep this up. I'm just gonna make each of these videos about 10 minutes long. So this is gonna be part one and we'll do the next one. So now we've completed this. So think about it. Is it better to use object.nil or object is equal, equal to nil? Hmm. Why would it be like that? Object, let's say uh, object, let's set obj is equal to object obj.nil is false, obj is equal to nil, oops, to nil is false as well. Hmm, 
I'm not even sure why why would we why would it be better to use this? I think that nil's just a cleaner one. It's shorter and it also just makes sense. Like um, you know, if that is that. So I don't know. I don't really have deep insight into that. Um, but anyways, let's go back over here. So now our next problem is that about objects on RB5. So if we go, um, this is in alphabetical order again. So about objects. Elemento. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, we can do this one. So is a, so the, this, it, this is really cool the way that they're, we're learning about this. So the test is that everything is an object. So one is an object. 1.5 is an object. String, uh, the string of, with the value of string is an object. Nil is an object. Object is an object. Well, we could just um, print, evaluate, uh, loop each of these, but this is um, basically just a way to identify the fact that everything in Ruby is an object. So a float here is an object. A string is an object. Nil is an object. We knew that from the last one. And an object is an object so that's true as well so all of these we want to make true and so i'm just command double clicking on there and i'm just going to say true and so now we can say save and now let's see test objects can be converted to strings so one two three to string and nil to string we already know that that um, is going to work right so one two three and then nil to string is an empty string right and it was nil to string is an empty string, but nil.inspect is the one that gets you the nil. And so 123, the integer, um, if we make that to string, in Ruby we'll immediately just do it like that. In JavaScript, it's uh, to string like that. So in uh, Ruby it's a little different, but I think it's a little cleaner and more succinct. That's why I like Ruby. Um, yeah, so what happens when we say test objects can be expect inspected? So 123.inspect is equal to 123. So it kind of does the, sa it does the same, kind of thing, same thing as string, but it's a little bit different. I guess it works exactly the same on integers, but with nil, it's going to be like, uh, it's going to run out to be like that. So nil.inspect. So if you get object.inspect, you know, you can you it'll it will also show you, you like that but if you go uh, object i think to string hmm, okay so that works as well interesting um so yeah test everything is an object has an id okay so this is really interesting so if we go object is equal to a new object so obj that's the this it, new object and if we go object dot object id what does that give us that gives us a, this number and this is like a number that ruby uses to store the the each object in the language so this is um some deep kind of stuff now what is this though is it object id i think it's going to be an integer cool so that's what it is so integer so um, assert equal this object class well we want to make this uh integer so here we have an object another object so i'm going to copy this into here and so we can see object is that and then another object is there and you'll see these numbers are different right so if we go object dot uh, object id and then another object uh, dot object id you'll see these numbers are different so that's that's the idea behind here is that even though they're pretty much the same in terms of just being a simple new object they have a different object id so that's how ruby keeps track of it so is the object here with this object id is it not equal to the object id here well we because these numbers are different they're not going to render true so this will be but because it's not equal to this is going to render true right true and so we want to say assert equal true um we want to say it's true that the object the initial object has an object id which is different than the object another object ID here. Um, so test small integers have fixed IDs. So cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, another time, again, you can do this kind of thing. I'm just going to copy the object ID. So zero object ID, you can see that has an object ID of one. So these object IDs are much bigger, but the integer object ID is just a simple uh, one. And so if we did one, and then if we did two object ID, and then if we did a hundred, object ID you can see that they kind of grow and so what do you think how does this grow well because 0 is 1 100 is 200 hmm I'm not really sure what would be 99 dot object ID 199 1 is 3 2 is 5 
That's wild. 1.1 object ID. Man, that's crazy. I don't understand why that is. But anyways, so zero is one. One is three. Uh, two is five. One, three, five. It goes up in odd numbers. But then 100 is 201. So why do IDs for small integers follow? What pattern do the object do the object IDs for small integers follow? Well, there's at at zero it's one, at one it's three, at two it's five, um, at three it's going to be seven, right? And at four it's going to be nine. So they go up by odd numbers. And so one hundred must be the two hundred and first number. Yeah, because 199 is an odd number, 201 is an odd number, and then I bet it's going to be if, like, 101 object ID is going to be 203, right? Cool. So that's how the object IDs for integers work in Ruby, I guess. And so that's the interesting thing about these Ruby koans, is it gives you to think about the, um, the way that the programming language works um, on a deeper level. So on our final one, test clone creates a different object. So object.new. Okay, cool. Let's do this one again. So I'm going to set object to a new object. And then we're going to say copy. We're going to have a copy object. So this is object.clone. Okay, so is our copy dot, uh, oops, is our copy uh, dot object ID, is that different than our object? dot object ID so it is different so even though so when you make a clone you're actually duplicating the ob object on a bottom on a lower level so this is important for not mutating your data when you're programming so object is not equal to copy well my guess is this is going to be false because they are clone right and then the object ID is not equal to object ID that should be true right cool and, um, but let's run this real quick. So our object and our copy, is that going to be, it's not equal to. Okay, so this is actually true. So the object, um, when you make a clone, they're not equal to each other, and their object IDs are also not equal to each other. At least that's the, the rumor. So let's go back over here, and we're gonna run rake again. And if, here's, I've got, I'm in my cones uh, folder on the terminal, and also if I go, Here's my Ruby version just for, um, for usefulness. So, and then we'll run rake one more time. Cool. And so now we see that we're on about arrays, which is in another folder. And that's going to be it for part two of this Ruby Colon tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.